Hey everyone, it's Kenji, and today we're making takeout style Kung Pao chicken. So this is different from um, some of the other videos on this channel which do a more sort of traditional style Kung Pao chicken. This one is the kind that I grew up eating in New York. Um, it would appear on menus um, probably called diced chicken with peanuts. Um, and so as opposed to the traditional version, which is mostly chicken um, with peanuts, uh, and scallions. This version usually also has red peppers and scallions added to it. Um, bell peppers and scallion, sorry, bell peppers and celery added to it. Um, it's also not as spicy and it has a little bit more sauce to it. Um, I like both versions. Um, I mean, I like the traditional one, I think a little bit more, but I definitely like this one. So starting with um, chicken breast, I'm gonna get it in a bowl and marinate it. Um, I always like to get a small cutting board on top of my big cutting board when I'm working with uh, raw meat. That way I can just move the cutting board to the sink and I'm ready to go with my, uh, with my vegetables. So for this chicken, we're going to do a little bit of white pepper. Uh, that's chicken breast, by the way. You can use ch chicken thigh as well. That's about a quarter teaspoon of white pepper. I do about a half teaspoon of kosher salt, a little bit of sesame oil, dash, a little bit of uh, dark soy sauce, a little splash of Shaoxing wine. Oh, you know, and in the meantime, let's make our sauce also. So our, our sauce is going to go also some Shaoxing wine, a couple tablespoons, maybe one tablespoon. teaspoon or so of soy sauce. I'll link to the recipe, by the way. This is all, um, I'm just eyeballing it, but the exact recipe is up on Serious Eats. Some uh, sesame oil. And for this one, normally I'd use chicken stock, but I don't have any, so I'm just gonna use a little bit of water just to thin it out. <clears throat> oh, oops. Also in the sauce goes some plain old distilled white vinegar. Add a tablespoon of that. Okay, and then in our chicken, we're gonna add a bit of cornstarch, and we're also gonna separately make a little cornstarch slurry here to thicken our sauce at the end. And so our chicken, we want to marinate this. I'm gonna kind of roughly move it around, give it a good massage. get it worked in there. Um, so ideally you would let this sit for maybe you know at least 15 minutes or so but I'm not going to because I'm I'm ready to eat lunch. All right so for our other ingredients we're gonna do some celery which I'm just gonna how am I gonna cut it I'll just cut it on a bias like that. couple stocks. We're going pretty vegetable heavy today. Bell peppers. Um, so when I cut bell peppers, I like to sort of fillet the outside like this. Starting from the top and working down. Well, you can get discard this bit and you end up with peppers like that. Oops. <clears throat> That rinse. Pepper's Florentine. Um, and we're aiming to cut everything sort of into these, you know, roughly similar size pieces. So the celery and the chicken, everything into like sort of, I don't know, I'm saying about three quarter inch dice or so. And the vegetables, we can stick them all together because those are all going to cook at the same time. So when I'm doing stir fries, um, you know, rather than separate every single ingredient, I kind of separate them according to what order they're going to be cooked in. Um, this is a hatch chili. Um, you don't have to use a hatch chili. You can use a regular green uh, bell pepper, but I had all these hatch chilies from the farmer's market. Um, so I am using them. They're a little hotter than a regular green bell pepper, which is, which is good because I like hot things. All right. The only ingredient I'm really missing here is garlic. I used up all my garlic yesterday and I forgot to buy more today, so this will be a garlic-free stir-fry, although normally I would put some garlic. Okay, 
So vegetables in there. And then for our aromatics, we got ginger here. You know, these scallions can go right in with those vegetables as well. I'm gonna cut them into sort of similar three quarters of an inch-ish lengths. Okay, I think we're good to go. Oh, and I, the, the only other thing is I got so some sliced ginger, these uh, Chinese um, Sichuan peppers. Um, you can use our bowl, you can use any kind of little dry hot chili. And our sauce and our slurry. And that's it. So we want to have everything ready before we start stir frying. And get this camera going so we can see what's going on. So what we're going to do is we're going to let a teeny bit of oil start to smoke down there. And we'll know that when that oil starts to smoke, that's when our wok is hot enough. And that's when we'll add the rest of our oil. Um, the reason you add a little oil first and not all of it at once is because you don't want the oil to start to sort of burn and get a bitter flavor, which it will do is if you let it all come to a smoking hot, um, you know, like a searing hot smoking temperature. Uh, so you add a little bit first, and once that starts to smoke, you know that you're ready to start cooking. Um, and that's when you can add the rest. Oh, I'm gonna use, use up this. This is just grapeseed oil. Um, you can use peanut oil, canola oil, grapeseed oil. This I had from uh, another thing I was cooking yesterday, just left over. Um, the real trick when trying to stir fry on a home range, first of all, having lots of bowls, um, but to cook in batches, um, because on a you know restaurant stir fry burner at a Chinese restaurant is a good you know 10x more powerful than a home burner. Um, and so if you try to stir fry everything at once in here, what ends up happening, oh, the swirly oil around, what ends up happening is that your meat and stuff will steam instead of properly stir frying. Right, get that chicken in there. Take it up a little bit. I'll show you my other little trick. I'll trick up my sleeve. I could have gone a little bit smaller on these chicken pieces. I don't know why I cut them so big, but there we are. So, if you want to get some of that restaurant style wok hay flavor, the, um, the flavor, the sort of smoke of the wok, um, that's the flavor you get from, do you ever, maybe I'll, I'll put a video up in the corner here, where um, when, you, when you stir fry over a restaurant wok range, um, the flame is big enough that it kind of shoots up out the back, and then when you toss your food through it, um, some of the oil droplets combust, vaporize, and then um, that sort of, that burnt oil falls back on the food and it gives it a kind of smoky aroma. Um, if you don't want to, if you don't have a restaurant style range, the way you can get that aroma is by doing this little torch. There you go. You'll smell it. You don't have to shake and, and stir fry while you do this. The, the, the flavor gets a little bit better if you do, but if you're, if you're not sort of, you don't feel comfortable doing that, you can just sort of torch it, stir it, torch it some more, stir it some more, etc. All right, so once that chicken is mostly cooked through, we're gonna transfer it out to this bowl. And this is where we're working in batches. So now that our chicken is cooked, we're going to now reheat that oil. So smart starts to uh, lightly smoke again. And what else do we need? Oh, we need these uh, goobers. Goobers. Okay, so oil smoking, smoking again. Got a little bit of fresh oil. 
We get our ginger. Our chilies. Um, if I had garlic, this is when I would put it in. A couple of smashed cloves. Okay, when those chilies are a little toasty, we go our vegetables. Technique. I'm uh, well. I was saving it for the book that I'm writing on cooking in a wok, but then um, over on Serious Eats, they um, another one of our writers, um, one of the Serious Eats writers, independently came up with this technique and published it. So I guess the cat's out of the bag now. Um, the point is, it works. Um, and what's great is that it even works on an electric range. So. Even if you can't, even if you don't have a gas range, you can still get that nice, true, smoky, wok hay flavor. Um, and I'm sorry if I'm butchering the pronunciation on that. All right, we want our vegetables to stay nice and crispy, so they're pretty much done at this point. So our chicken goes back in. That are peanuts. These are just roasted peanuts. Like straight up planters roasted peanuts. Sauce goes in. Finally, a slurry. I'm just going to let that come to a simmer. So let the sauce reduce down to the consistency we want it. There's not too much. So right about there is good, and we're done. We're gonna serve this with some rice. There you go. This is a sort of Chinese American New York style diced chicken with hot peppers and peanuts, AKA American Kung Pao chicken. Let's give it a taste. Very tasty. Come on, you want a little nibble? Here, let's share this bite. No? <laughs> All right. All right, friends, I'm gonna have dinner. Where we lunch, and I will see you next time. Bye bye.